It's finally here, my Grizzly Bandsaw. I've been waiting so long and saving up forever to buy this thing. Let's get it unboxed Holy and ready cow, to go. Holy cow, you guys, that was a workout. I didn't film anything because my dad and I were, uh, were struggling. It's a lot heavier than it looks, and uh, we wanted to get it right off the pallet onto this wheeled cart I got directly from Grizzly, and uh, we were able to kind of scoot it to the edge of the cart, and then we actually stuck... I'll show you here because there is a hook up here to lift from if you have the equipment unfortunately my doors are too short for the tractor to fit in here so we couldn't lift from that hook so instead we put a piece of the shipping foam underneath here and then ran a oak 2x4 underneath so that my dad and I from both sides could lift with like our shoulder and we scooted it inch by inch onto the cart and it finally dropped right into place. So here it lies. It came with these two bags underneath the table in this bottom pulley compartment. These just twist open and they uh, were shipped uh, like this. Looks like I'm gonna have to flip this around. That ain't good. Cause I'm hitting this wheel. If I ever have to do maintenance on the, uh, the bottom pulley or those wheels, I'll have to uh, shift this around. For now, it's not moving. Hopefully I don't have to do anything down there. It came with this box here, which looks like the uh, fence. And then this here, which is the tabletop. So I'm gonna get started opening all these bags up and figuring out what the first step is. The very first step in assembly is going to be attaching this adjustment screw onto this knob right here, there's one side of it that is flat and that's where the set screw, which is already in place, uh, will get tightened down onto. It comes with an Allen wrench, which is kind of nice. So you just slide this on. Number two is to grab the longest bolt in the package and then thread the nut on there about halfway up the bolt. Then you're gonna take this. This is going to be the positive stop for your table. When you tilt it, you can get it to positively stop at 90 so it's adjustable. And this goes right here. I'm going to thread this on there. So I didn't over tighten this because I'm sure I'm going to have to adjust this. And then when you have it at the perfect height, you lock this into the base. So that's where that goes. And the next step, it asks us to remove the blade. So you're going to take this knob here and twist it clockwise it even tells you which way to loosen it and then we are going to open both of these doors remember when i said this was going to be an issue son of a bitch we'll see if we can get it without uh shifting this apart because i can't lift this by myself all right, I was able to tilt the whole saw back a little bit, just enough to get this door open while I'm working on it. Note to self and anybody out there, this is a great card. I'm really happy with it. It seems really solid. But these foot levers, which my dummy butt thought would go on the front, they go on the back. Once that tension is all loosened up, the blade just slips right off of these wheels. You have to guide it out in away from this piece here as well as this piece here. So once you get it out of those two uh, shields, it pops right out of there. Okay. That wasn't so bad. And then I think it just has four bolts and lock washers that go up through the bottom and into that table. All right, four bolts, one right here, here. It's really dark, but there's one on the back side, and then the fourth one is right there. All right, next we're gonna start working on the fence to the saw. There's two hex bolts and they provide the hex wrench for you. And you put the bigger hole, so there's two holes in this square tubing already mounted the first one. You have the bigger hole facing outward and then you just thread this right into 
the cast iron table base. And I make the mistake so you don't have to. Don't put that rail on the front, put it on the back, and then take this fence with our ruler on it, or our measuring tape on it, and this gets bolted on to the front. As always, put your lock washer on first and then the flat washer. Up next, uh, you're gonna work on the fence itself. This doesn't come attached, so we're going to screw that into place. And as you tension this, this is kind of what locks it into place is your tension on here. And then you can push it down to lock it in. So you can get this good and snug, and then when you want it locked into place, you pull it back down. So the next thing we're aiming for is an even gap beneath the fence all the way across. And to do that, you adjust this little tab here. I had to lower this down a little bit so that it raised the fence up. And I think I have a pretty similar gap all the way across. All right, next up, you're going to grab this threaded knob. And then this little plate here is actually threaded itself. I had to lift the table fence up off of the table to tighten it. Uh, because this wouldn't spin but i'm going to lock this back down and then this is the resaw plate which adds a little bit of height to your fence and this just gets see if i can do this one-handed slides onto that there we go might have to loosen it just a little bit and then to tighten it down you pull out and then you can fasten it nice and tight this way. Once I clean up all that grease and get some wax on here, it'll be a lot more smooth. Frozen grease is some nasty stuff. I might've got a little carried away with the WD-40 here, but apply a good amount and let it sit for a few minutes and this will eat right through that grease and you can wipe it right off. Now that I've got it all cleaned up, I'm gonna use this uh, Bow Shield T9. It's like a wax protectant, uh, and it makes everything just slide like butter, and it keeps that rust from forming. So I just put like a thin layer over it. Maybe a not so thin layer. And then I just buff that in with a clean rag, and then let it cure overnight. I highly recommend that you use this on pretty much any cast working table in your shop, especially your jointer and planer. Just makes them makes your boards slide across. It's so much easier. There's way less resistance. And on top of making it easier to use everything, it prevents that rust buildup. So highly recommend it. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so the next step is to adjust and make sure the blade is spinning directly down the center of these wheels right here. And to do that, we need to loosen these Allen bolts, these two here, as well as this one here. And I'm kind of just learning this along with you guys. But when you loosen these here, you can control how close these bearings are to the blade, okay? And right now we want them away from the blade and then I'm just gonna snug these down they don't move on the top and on the bottom. So this is really difficult to see. Um, there you can kind of tell where the blade is and where that bearing is inside this red mark here. So that's not touching either. You don't want, once you've got the bearings away from the blade, you're going to re-engage if this isn't already engaged. It shows you what direction to tighten it. I have it tight already. You'll kind of feel it hit a stop there. Then you're gonna add some tension until you get this point between the four and the six. And I believe that this is our tension knob right down here. And as I'm spinning this, you can see how I'm creating tension and this little lever here is moving. So I know that I am in fact tightening the blade. Okay, we're right at about five. It said between four and six, so let's put it right on Went a little too far. We'll put a rate right on five there and check it out. Actually, you want this blade 
to track in the dead center of this tire. Did it a few times, three or four times, and mine is actually staying right in the middle of that tire, which is fantastic. However, if it is not, or if you ever change a blade and it's not staying in the center, here you can see in that sight glass, as I spin this, see how it's staying right in the middle? If the blade starts drifting towards the back or the front of this wheel, then it's out of alignment. And to adjust the alignment on this one is this knob right here. So you have this lever here that's essentially like a lock nut. And then you just turn this in or out. And this is going to adjust the tilt of this top wheel. And you're just gonna do micro adjustments because a little does make a lot of a difference or a lot of difference. Every micro adjustment you make, spin it two or three times and watch that blade and you'll start to see it track one way or the other and then just kind of fine tune it. And when you're happy with it, cinch this little locking lever back down. So I'm gonna lock that in tight because I'm really happy with how mine looks. One thing that I forgot to mention is this wheel that I put on right out of the gates. There's a locking knob here and this adjusts this whole tracking system right here. You also have a scale on the side for height adjustments. And once it's unlocked, this just cranks up and down and it's a matter of that easy to adjust your height. And I think the max height on this, according to the scale, is 12 inches. And it does hit a stop at 12 inches. So, I mean, that's a pretty good clearance there. And then this is a 17 inch bandsaw. So that means that from this point to this point is 17 inches. So. I don't know how well this will show up on camera, but it's a massive machine. I mean, I don't have a very big shop and it's hard to give you any point of reference, but I mean, there's my saw stop back there. And then here's my, my workbench over there. I mean, it's a pretty big footprint. It's a massive machine. It's built solid. And uh, I can't wait to fire this thing up. Uh, I think the very last thing to do is get my power hooked up. They bring this along with and they say that after you put your blade in, you're supposed to put this in uh, to help keep the table aligned with itself since it's split right there. Apparently this helps keep it aligned. So put that into place and we're ready for power. All right, I lied, we're not quite ready to fire this thing up. We have to align the tabletop to the blade. And as you can see, we're not quite square. We're off by uh, just about an eighth of an inch. See if that'll focus, there we go. So to adjust the table now, you've got these two locking knobs underneath the table and these just kind of ratchet. This is the, the one that locks the table into place and this one actually is supposed to move, there we go, move the table itself. There you can see we are nice and square. Maybe from this side it'll be a little bit easier. No gap at the top or at the bottom, nice and flush. Got that locked in, so now our blade is perfectly square. So next we wanna get our guide bearings back into place. And what we want out of this is a 16th of an inch on each side. So you don't want those bearings to be moving when this is just going straight up and down, but you only want them about a 16th away. You only want this rear bearing, which you can't really see, a 16th inch away from the back of the blade. And then you only want about a 16th of an inch between the gullet of the saw blade and the front of this bearing, a little bit more actually in my case, so that when this blade gets tension and gets pushed back, I'm hitting that back bearing, but the gullet or the blades or the teeth on my blade are not hitting those bearings. You don't want these teeth hitting the bearings. Okay, do that exact same thing on the front or on the top as you did on the bottom. There you can kind of see we've got pretty much an even distance on both on the top. And then it's really dark down here. I doubt this will show up on camera, but we're really similar down below as well. Tough's giving me kisses while I'm down there. Good boy. A quick and easy way to make sure that your fence is square to your table is to lock your fence into place and then measure to the miter slot at the front and at the back. So this is the bottom of the ruler here and it is just past seven and a half. 
and at the back here we're sitting at about the exact same so there might be a 30 second off from the front to the back but for for a, a bandsaw that's good enough for me the one thing that i'm not happy with and there's probably a way to fix this if you know in the comments below please let me know so i have my fence at the zero mark okay and then i got it locked in but this scale right here is showing that my zero is way over here and i'm somewhere past an inch over here an inch and three eighths about so you know i was kind of looking around like maybe there's a way to adjust this piece here slide it over a little bit but this just seems to be like a sticker on here that's already adhered to this surface i don't really want to peel that up and risk it not sticking anymore Maybe there's a simple way to adjust this. I don't know. Please let me know if you do know, because I would like to be able to use this as an accurate size reference like I do over on my saw stop. And the second thing that I'm not too thrilled about is that it doesn't come with the actual plug. Now this machine is wired for 220. It's capable of being wired at 110 as well, but it does not come with a plug. I bought those two Grizzly machines and they both came with the plug included. So just something to be aware of i understand that everybody's shop has different plugs and outlets but this is the style that i have in my shop and i just had to go out and buy this they're not uh they're not expensive by any means but i was prepared to have this thing up and running the first night and here i am uh, i had to run to the hardware store the next day and get this so if you're going to buy this machine just be prepared uh you also have to buy a plug that fits your shop to whatever that might be and I'm not an electrician, so I probably shouldn't even show this. But if you have this style of a plug with the ground facing up, the black goes on the right and the white goes on the left. Just like this diagram shows here. Just make sure you put this on first before you, you wire up the actual plug itself. Otherwise, you have to take it all apart again when you're done. All right, well, it's the moment of truth. I wheel it over. Uh, this isn't obviously going to be where I permanently place this, but it's the only outlet I have at the moment. So we're going to fire it up, and you and I are going to find out together if this thing uh, explodes or if it runs the way we are hoping. So here goes nothing. Runs pretty smooth, surprisingly. There's a little bit of chatter in here, and I don't know if that is uh, something I need to adjust with my bearings or just <coughs> the sound that it makes. Um, why don't I find a piece of lumber and do a test cut quick and see how it does. I think I've got some white oak laying around, so we can give that a try. So here's the very first cut on this saw. I found some eight quarter white oak, and I just did a random cut without using the fence or anything just to see how it would do. I have to admit there is some chatter in the blade right now and I'm going to get to the bottom of that and try and get it to smoothen out and straighten out as best I can. Then I threw on my resaw blade and cut through this four inch thick white oak. Uh, this is what I pretty much bought the saw for is for resawing lumber and this worked very well. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed watching me assemble this and make my first few cuts on it. I'll be putting this to the test in the uh, near future. And this thing will be in here for quite a while. I think that this is a very solidly built unit. I truthfully am saying that I'm not sponsored by Grizzly. I paid my own money for this thing. Now I'd give it like a 7 or 8 out of 10. If I can if I can fix that vibration issue, I'll be super happy. And that'll bump it up a little bit. Thanks a ton for watching. I hope this was helpful. And I'll see you on the next build.